In this video, we will focus on securing our REST service with basic authentication. We will show how to set up basic authentication in our Spring Security configuration. We will then focus on consuming the REST service with a browser-based REST client. And we will finish by implementing some live integration tests against the deployed REST service. Let's start by setting up basic authentication for our REST service. First thing we'll need to do is to configure how our application manages sessions. We need to keep in mind that this is a RESTful service, so we need to follow the statelessness constraint in REST. This essentially means no sessions. Our REST service will have no sessions whatsoever. We can configure this by setting the create session attribute to stateless. This will guarantee that our application will not attempt to create any session. Next, we will need to enable basic authentication. We can do that by simply adding the HTTP basic element to our main HTTP attribute. And this is it. The namespace support that Spring Security provides is powerful enough that HTTP basic is everything we need to set up basic authentication for our service. Also notice that we have no intercept URL elements as we had before in our HTTP main element. This is because security is enforced by method level annotations. These are enabled and these are used in our service layer as we saw in the previous video, so we have no need for any intercept URLs. Finally, we'll need to modify our custom user details service to stop using the service layer. This is an important point to understand. Our service layer is now fully secured. This means that this user details service, which was previously using the user service to retrieve the user by its username, can no longer do so because it itself is not authenticated. So what we'll have to do is to make use of the raw DAO layer instead of the user layer. The DAO layer is just raw persistence, no security concerns are applied, so this suits us well here as we are able to simply retrieve the user by its username. And this is all. At this point our user service should be fully secured. So let's restart the server and let's try to consume a URI of the REST user service. We are going to use this REST client for Firefox and of course any REST client or HTTP client for that matter would work just fine. So we are going to perform a get on the slash users URI to retrieve all user resources in the system. So let's perform this and we are being prompted for security credentials. This is because we have not configured any security credentials when we sent the request. So the server challenges us to enter our security credentials. If we cancel, we will get a 401 unauthorized as we expect. However, if we do set basic authentication credentials, we are going to set the credentials for admin one, and we do send the request again, we are receiving the 200 OK from the server as we expect, and we are receiving the raw JSON representing our user resources. Let's finish this video by writing a simple integration test against our fully deployed REST service. We are going to use the REST Assured library. This is a straightforward HTTP client with RESTful support on top, so it's a very useful tool built specifically to test our REST services. We are now going to test the same operation, a get on slash users retrieving all user resources in the system. And notice that this operation is not specifying any kind of security credential, so we are expecting back a 401 unauthorized. So let's run this test and it is successful. The server is actually returning the 401 as expected. So let's now take a look at the second test. This is given authenticated by basic authentication. When resources are retrieved, then 200 is received. That means we are authenticated with admin1 and admin1 password. And so we are performing this request with full preemptive basic authentication credentials. So the response we should get back is the 200 OK. So let's run this test 
and make sure this works as expected. And we are good. We are able to verify the successful status code of the operation in a live JUnit test. At the end of this video, we should be able to set up in practice basic authentication with Spring Security for a RESTful web service.